Okay. <laughs> so, because I'm also part of the organizer team, I gotta say thank you for joining us today and listening to our talks and what we um, have for you. <laughs> and uh, thank you for uh, uh, the speakers as well for participating today. And yes, it's my first official talk, so yeah, if I'm blabbering, maybe just show me three fingers, that means like you can move on. I still have t-shirts to give, that's the good news, so I hope I won't bore you to death. And otherwise, I will just start. My name is Timea Turdean, I'm actually from Romania, that's where I did my bachelor's in computer science, and then I decided to step it up and move to Austria, change my environment and culture, and uh, start the master uh, program at the Technical University here in business engineering and computer science. It doesn't exist anymore, by the way, it's auslaufen. Uh, they have their reasons, but uh, anyway, I'm very, very happy that I took the decision to go out of my comfort zone and move to a different country and try this master program because my first goal was at the beginning to find something in uh, computer science that I am passionate about and that I want to turn into my career. So I was lucky that the master program actually um, gave me exactly that. And uh, my, to uh, my presentation for, from today is actually a very small part of uh, what I uh, managed to do during my master studies. So sentiment analysis is what I'm gonna talk to you about. Do you know uh, anything about this topic? Anyone? Perfect, then I'm at the right <laughs> conference because it's an introduction into sentiment analysis and I actually hope to um, get you interested in the topic. Okay, uh, so I studied business engineering and computer science. And because this master program was very freely designed, I could choose courses from any faculty inside uh, the university. So being at the first semester in a foreign country, in a foreign st studying environment, I asked myself, okay, what shall I choose? I cannot choose chemistry, physics, uh, no. So I chose something with the heart. I chose something that has to do with geography, with cartography. So I ended up in the research group cartography where Manuela is actually also and actually took some courses from, um, with her. So um, that's all fine and okay. But I also started doing my uh, master thesis at the Cartography Institute, which involves psychology, cartography, I could say a bit of geography, definitely computer science. Uh, it involves sentiment analysis. It involves uh, social media, so it's very multidisciplinary, and that's what I wanted from the beginning. So that's why it's sentiment analysis. I've been doing research on the topic for more than a year, writing the thesis more than seven months already, which is almost finished, so yay. Uh, so sentiment analysis. Uh, it plays an important role in helping people making decisions, making the right decisions. And I'm gonna also tell you why. First though, I want to tell you what sentiment analysis is by definition, uh, what is and it was used for, some example applications, some basic tasks, because it's an intro, and how to implement it. It's not hard at all, you will see. And what are the current challenges in this research? field. Going right in. This is one of the many definitions that I found and I like it very much. Sentiment analysis um, is a field of study that analyzes people's opinions, sentiments, attitude, um, and emotions from written language. Okay. Um, my filtering and my understanding of the definition and also extension of it is that uh, it's also called, first of all, opinion mining, that it's not necessary in written language that it's used for, can be also in uh, 
um, talking language or other source materials. But going a bit back, it's actually a pretty new research field. It's like started in 2001 and it was mentioned in uh, research papers about stock market sentiment, about opinions in, op uh, in online discussions. In 2002, they started talking about mining product reputation, then 2003, product reviews and favorability of products. So maybe you got an idea of how it started. It started in parallel in uh, research, but also in companies. They were interested in stock markets. They were interested in marketing in products and what people think about products and about companies. And it grew bigger and bigger till uh, the present days when, well, it can be applied to politics. You can, uh, you can uh, follow, for instance, what people think about different political parties or persons. There's a lot of uh, research which involves um, movie databases. And my research in the master thesis was opinion mining or sentiment analysis on locations and, pla and places in Vienna. So moving right into some applications. Uh, yes, I mentioned that I uh, do my thesis at the Cartography Institute. So yes, I love maps. I love virtual maps. maps. <laughs> so my most of my examples are maps. I hope it opens. Ah, and it did. This is a mood map that maps uh, in real time. You can see that points drop. Those points are tweets from Twitter users in UK. And um, they have a color key. The green ones are analyzed as being uh, positive tweets and the red ones are negative tweets and the yellow are neutral. So let's see if I can grab one. Where is my mouse here? You can actually click on one and see what the tweet is. Have a good game, mate. Great. It's been... Uh, rated as an opinion, as a positive opinion, opinion, uh, positive sentiment. Okay, this is one example what you can do with sentiment analysis, but I have more. This is um, a virtual map uh, created on uh, the map of New York. It gathers uh, wisdom from people that bike. They want to raise awareness and run, uh, want to, well, they want it to be useful for people who bike around New York. And again, green is positive wisdoms and the red is uh, negative wisdoms. And you could see absolutely worst bike lane cloned by so on. So you can actually see what people post out there and maybe you can also make your own routing around the city. And a few more examples. This is the Twitter mood map for US. It's uh, also supposed to be in real time and it also gathers opinion from tweets from people around the US and it's also in real time. So you could see, for instance, that the New York state is red or blue, which is uh, negative. So people have kind of a negative opinion, negative feeling today in New York, but there's also a bit of positiveness on the East Coast, so it's okay. <laughs> and uh, the bigger di the diameter, the more tweets they analyze in the region. Okay, but uh, also there used to be this um, service online from Google, it was called Google Products. I liked it, but they don't have it as far as I know anymore. And they were gathering all the reviews from people about a certain product that you were looking for. For instance, Max Shopping Goods 
you can see a rating scale, which is very nice graphically put out there. On customer services, it's rather negative, the reviews that they gather. On shipping, it's so and so. Price, price is very good. So I think about that. And the return policy is very bad. Well, maybe the price is lower, but the return policy is bad, so pff, what shall I choose in yet? It depends, of course, what is important for you. But it's a very, very nice um, way of representing opinions for products. Okay, then I showed you example. I showed you a bit what sentiment analysis can do. But let's see how we do that. At least in computer science, you have to teach the computer <laughs> to do all the hard work for you, of course. So this is the tricky part sometimes. Let's take this uh, example. The restaurant is nice and it has a good food. It has good food. I want to see if this sentence is positive or negative or neutral. But maybe I also want to rate it from one to nine because uh, positive, neutral and negative is very large. So I want to make it more specific, like on a scale from one to nine, what, what is this text? And how do we do that? Well, uh, currently we have, I want to talk to you about two methods, the machine learning method and the keyword based method. There are also some other methods. I can tell you later in private if you're interested or you can mail me, no problem. Uh, maybe you, did you hear about machine learning so far? Do you know anything about it? Well, I, I'm pretty sure it sounds like, whoa, that's complicated. No, <laughs> maybe it is. But it's very easy to use because they have a lot of libraries and a lot of tools which you just import into your code and just use them. But I have to tell you that machine learning is all over us at the moment. It's in your mailbox. Uh, it's inbox. It's, it's uh, used very broadly in text classification. And in the mail inbox, it filters your spam emails and puts them in the, that weird folder spam which you never look at. This is all what, uh, and a lot more that machine learning can do uh, for us. And it can also be useful in uh, teaching the computer to identify the opinion in a text, either a sentence, a whole description, a whole text, a group of papers, and so on. Going into details in machine learning is not the point today, and we would probably need the whole week. So I will just tell you about keyword-based methods, which is very good and uh, to begin with in sentiment analysis. So keyword-based methods. This means that you have a sentiment lexicon. As an example, I, I also work with the ANU, the Effective Norms for English Words lexicon, which has around 2,500 rated English words. And these are some examples. That, uh, so each word has a number. And this number represents from a scale from one to nine, how people perceive this word. For instance, tumor. It's a rather negative word. Truth, it's rather positive. Ulcer, negative. Uncertain, eh. It's rather uh, negative as well. Twilight, it's, it's seen as a positive word. So this research uh, sentiment lexicon is actually a research by the University of Florida and they are constantly working on it and making it and growing it bigger so that other uh, researchers use it. And it's of course available, you just have to subscribe on their website for it. So let's take an example. We have our sentiment lexicon and we want to find out in the end what is the sentiment of this sentence. What do you think it is? Yeah. Why, why would you say it's positive? Um, because the, the word is nice and good. Exactly. Okay, so now we only have to teach the computer to tell us that. On a million sentences, for instance. But anyway, we start with the sentiment lexicon. We, we split up the sentence in words 
and then we look the words in our sentiment lexicon and we pick out the values of each word and in the end we do the average of the sentence which is in this case 7.205. So going back to the basic tasks, rank the sentiment of the text from one to nine. Ta-da, it's done, that easy. <laughs> And then the final question is the sentiment of the text positive or negative because the scale is from one to nine. Seven, I would say it's a positive sentence. I hope you agree. Okay. So let's go back to my initial example with the Twitter mood map. I'm gonna show it to you once again. So this Twitter mood map, which is in real time, is actually based on exactly the example that I showed you. They use the annual lexicon and they just take the tweets from the Twitter stream, they apply the algorithm, put it in a database and then show it to you on the map. Well, that all, all that to do is actually not that easy in computer science because you need to know a bit about APIs and such and such. But I just wanted to tell you that um, it's not hard. And you got a lot of papers, you got a, a lot of projects, you got a lot of examples on how to do it. And if not, you can also email me, no problem. I really like this stuff. I can teach you more about it. On the other hand, um, you just have to define for yourself what you would like to do. For instance, uh, on open love map that Manuela presented, you could also add another layer, a sentiment layer to it and find out which are the opinions about the profiles. <laughs> are they good? Are they any good? Is the sex shop good? Is it not? Well, anyway, you, you see in which direction it can go. And I, on, on my research project, I added another layer to the map, which includes opinions about places in Vienna. It's like how people perceive Karlsplatz, for instance, is it more negative, neutral, or positive? Okay, I'm gonna talk last but not least about some of the challenges that you will face if you want to implement sentiment analysis. Setting, for instance, the context. This can be very tricky. Uh, as an example, if I talk about um, I have a bad road on my street for cars. So I'm in Austria right now, so I, I say I have a bad road. It's not good for cars. So, okay, fine. But what if I'm in a, an African country, sorry for the reference, but I found a very good picture for that, just to explain to you what bad actually can mean. <laughs> So if I say bad road in Austria, it can be like a small hole <laughs> in the ground or whatever. But if I say bad for this road, then it's majorly bad. So you, you kind of, you know, that rating scale from one to nine and putting bad in the rating scale, you have to give it a context. Is it a three? Is it a five? Is it a seven? What does bad mean for where you want to, what kind of data do you use and for what? Okay, then uh, there's a whole research going on on detecting sarcastic uh, sentences. This is uh, also can be very difficult and it's very, very important in client product reviews. Well, you can imagine. And uh, detecting the sentiment target and the sentiment source. Because maybe you're interested in um, specifically what generates the sentiment and what is it about. If I have this sentence, Alice is afraid of the bear. This is a very used example in previous researches as well. I could argue that the sentiment in this sentence is fear. So it's getting more specific. What do you think is the target of the sentiment in this text. The target of the sentiment, fear. 
I'm going to give a t-shirt if you know. <laughs> you can guess. <laughs> you have two options or three. Nope. Alice, I heard Alice once, twice. It's Alice. Can you pass it Thanks. So, yes, the target of the sentiment is Alice. So, what is the source of the sentiment, fear? The bear. Ta-da! <laughs> the bear. Exactly. So, Alice is, be, is, is feeling afraid because of the bear. So, the bear generates for Alice this sentiment. So, so you can also already see that it's getting more complicated, the problem gets more complex, how do I teach the computer to know that and so on. You have ways to do that, but it can get also intriguing at the same time. This is still anyway researched in, in present times to, to get out of the product review like, like really what, what is the source of the sentiment. Trying to understand why a person said or why, why the sentence about a product is negative. And then you also have the question of how, how good is the sentiment analysis algorithm? How, how can I measure that? It's like I'm, I'm running it on a million of tweets, for instance but I don't know for certain if it's accurate enough. Did it really identify the right sentiment or opinion? You have uh, metrics which can uh, measure that mathematically. They are called precision, recall, and accuracy. But I found on Wikipedia something which I really wanted to share today, which is the overconfidence effect. And it says, if a program were right 100% of the time, humans would still disagree with it about 20% of the time because they disagree about almost any answer. <laughs> so, so you see my problem with computer science and trying to understand sentiments and emotions in computer language. <laughs> and then also trying to explain other people why I rated the sentence being positive and negative when they actually would say, yeah, but that's neutral. <laughs> Okay, that was most, uh, mostly my content. I told you what, by definition, sentiment analysis is. I uh, told you what it was and still is used for nowadays. I showed you the cool uh, virtual maps applications, which you can also do yourself. Basic tasks, tasks of identifying the sentiment in the text and uh, giving it a scale. How to implement sentiment analysis, you have several methods out of which machine learning can be one and key-based methods with sentiment lexicons. And I also told you a bit about what questions you will have while you, you choose to implement sentiment analysis, so the challenges. Yes, thank you.